Okay. Doug is a welder who's working for employment. Hourly rates for available jobs are shown in the table below. State the mean hourly rate. I had a lot of uh, a lot of you. You're off by even one value. So please check. So I'm gonna count two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. There are fourteen uh, hourly wages. So now you gotta add this up. Yeah. So take your time. I hope I get this right. Three thirty-four thirty-four. I'm gonna double check here because uh, I don't want to get it wrong. Yes, I'm good. Make sure you show this work, okay? Three thirty-four. 34, you divide by 14, it's 23.88. What is this in? We are in dollars, right? So the average hourly wage is 23.88. State the mode of the hourly rate. Um, here's where I'm going to use a highlighter. Right? My mode, I think it's 1850, 26.75, I see one, two, three, four. Yes, that's right. So I'm gonna highlight those. There you go. So it's 26.75 is the mode of the hourly wages. And then C, explain why the mode may be the better indicator than the mean of the hourly rate Doug could expect. So it's, it's not saying, they're not, don't argue with them. They're saying, hey, explain why the mode may be a better representation. And what they were looking for is just you saying it's the most common most common rate five times right in the set that's it one student wrote because it's the most used number and it was it was a correct answer yeah we're good keep going question 35 the table below indicates the hours per week each student in the band practices their instrument Calculate Beth's percentile rank for the time she spends practicing an instrument. Percentile rank is B over N times 100. What is B in this case? B would be um, students practicing less than what how many hours blank hours yeah you gotta go look for beth beth practices two and a half hours so b will be the number of students that practice less than two and a half hours so let's figure that out yes so that's one two three four five six six students Okay, and N would be the total number of students. So we've got 
two, four, six, eight. Yes, eight students. Yeah. So some of you were doing on the review, you were adding up all the hours or something like that. In this case, you don't need to you just figure out the number of students, right? So percentile rank is six over eight times a hundred. Um, that would be 75 or PR 75. Either one is fine. Um, you, you may put the 75th, but you don't have to. Can you all just promise me something on this one? Don't put a decimal down. Okay, so you can write down the decimal, but then say, hey, it's in the something percentile. So you round to the whole number. Up or down, actually, it doesn't matter. Also, don't put percentage symbols on percentile rank. You will also lose marks for that. If they ask you to say what does this number represent, I will add, I will add that to your notes here. Seventy-five percent of students practice less. It's always like who's below you, right? Practice less than. In this case, we know two and a half hours. We know exactly because Beth practices this many hours. So we know 75% of students practice less than Beth. Okay. In this case, they gave you quite a bit of information. If all they said is Beth practices her instrument, and based on her hours of practicing, she's in the 75th percentile. Is she practicing a lot? Well, if you don't know the hours, you actually don't know. You can only say compared to most students, she's practicing more, right? But it could be that all the other students are practicing like nothing, like they're not practicing at all. So that's why they're below her. Let's keep going. Choose the letter that best completes the statement below. Removing a high outlier. So can you imagine a number line for me real quick? So you have a bunch of numbers here, but then you have the one up here, outlier. If you were to remove that one, would it increase the mean? If you remove this one? No. Lowers the mean? I think we've got something there. Has no effect on the mean? Eh. Increases the median? Not necessarily, no. We don't know that for sure. We do know that it lowers the mean, right? If you remove that, the mean will come back down. Let's go. Second last question. The test results from Jeremy's statistics course are listed below. His final grade in the course will be calculating using a trimmed mean. Does that ring a bell? Cal calculate Jeremy's final grade after eliminating the highest and the lowest test mark. They're usually quite specific in that. They, they give it away. So we're going to say this. What's the highest? 95. What is the lowest? 40. Okay, so you're left with the, the other four scores. So the, it's still a mean. Our arithmetic mean is using all of them. Trimmed mean is what we're doing now. So it's 50 plus 65 plus 70 plus 55. All of that divided by four. Two forty over four at 60% average. This is a trimmed mean. What if you did the arithmetic mean? I'm just gonna do it on the side. Arithmetic, sorry, it looks like a doctor's note, I know, arithmetic mean. Um, we would have six numbers, correct? Would I include all of them? Watch my trick to help me 
save me time. So 240 is what I had when I removed two values. I'm just going to go back up, add 95, add 40. So that's 375, correct? So we're going to go 375 divided by 6. That's 62 and a half. Which one would Jeremy prefer? In this case, arithmetic is the preferred. I'm just saying that the province, like they always come up with new things, right? They want you, they want to check for your understanding. So maybe you have to do some more calculating. Who knows? And then sometimes they will ask you, which one is a better representation? Is it the trimmed mean or is it the arithmetic mean? And I would look at the outlier. Like if there's a, like in this case, his test scores, like actually both of them are sort of outliers, but they would have just one outlier. So if there's a clear, like out of the norm number in there, then the trimmed mean is better because you're removing any bias, right? So trimmed mean is usually the best option, uh, except for in this case, the student would probably not go for trimmed mean. Right, so it's dependent on the situation. All right, last one. This one was on the review, I believe. Uh, so we have a weighted mean situation, right? Calculate the mark Megan needs on her final exam if the final she wants is 80%. So backwards. Uh, and this is for, with the weighted situation. So the first thing I do is, do you remember MAD? You will actually be happy at this point because it's the last question, but multiplication, addition, division, right? So you want to multiply across. So this is 750. This is, I need some help on that one. 2550. 2920, and this is 20x, okay? We don't know what that uh, mar mark uh, is yet. We'll figure that out. So this is the M part what, that you just did here. And then you need to add. So this is where I set up my, um, actually, I'm just gonna cut right to it. I'm gonna say that if 80 is what I want, Then I need to add 750 plus 2550 plus 2920 plus 20x, like that. And remember when one of the columns adds up to 100, this one actually does add up to 100. So you need to divide everything by 100. So in these types of questions, you do not need to convert because you're keeping everything as a percentage. Let's clean it up a little bit. I will add what I can. 6220 is what I get when I add these here. 6220 plus 20x over 100. And now, now I will start uh, doing the algebraic steps, right? So the first thing is, yes, I multiply by 100. Multiply by 100. And that's to get rid of the 100 here. So that gives me 8,000 is equal to 6220 plus 20x. Then I need to subtract. And so 8,000 minus, that's 1780. Divide both by 20, should have been in red. If I divide by 20, I get 89%. That is what is needed. Is it possible? Yes. It's under 100%. Is it realistic? It's pushing it because 85 has been the, long, the highest mark so far. 